<clears throat> Literature, Ernest Hemway. Now let's continue our my effort to try to convince you that literature is good. And then when I say literature is good, guys, I mean even for a scientist, even for a doctor, <clears throat> even for a technician, even for anybody, okay? In my last video, if you haven't, please watch it. Uh, I've told you that uh, literature has more propositions per sentence than science. Yeah, the tendency is to be like that, right? Uh, well, now I would like to talk about contradictions in depth, right? Uh, let's imagine uh, there is a person, okay, and I don't understand the person's action. And let's imagine I am a psychologist. Okay, I can admit defeat, right? And say I can't understand what the person is saying, all right? Uh, or I can try to make the fit the person fit the, the science I have, okay? If I admit defeat, I'm not doing science, you know, I'm saying I can't do science in that uh, specific aspect, right? If I simplify the person in order to fit the category I have in science, that's, that's okay, uh, because I may decide that I want to analyze just certain aspects of that person, right? Because nobody can, under can, can analyze everything in a person. So I, I, will, I will analyze certain aspects of that person. So I will cut the person up in hundreds of aspects and I won't even mind about the other cuts, but I will get one specific aspect that fits with my theory or fits my theory and I'll be happy with it, okay? Now let's imagine I come up with uh, another uh, theory and I want examples uh, to, to help uh, my theory uh, uh, be more convincing, <clears throat> I will go to reality and I will try to get those examples and report uh, those examples, okay? And of course, I'm going to choose this, the examples that are relevant, okay? Is that bad? Am I being dishonest? Of course not. Uh, if science didn't do that, we wouldn't, we wouldn't uh, have science, you know? Uh, one criticism people, uh, some people make against science is this kind of simplification. For example, when you get water, water is not just the, the chemical component of, of it. This is not water, right? Water is also something delicious for a person that is in the desert. Water is also something threatening for a person that is uh, on a boat uh, in the middle of a storm, you know? Okay, water is so much more than that, right? But let's imagine if a scientist, like a, a person studying chemistry, would, uh, let's imagine he had to, to take into account all of those complexities of water. It, Science would go, wouldn't go on, you know, we wouldn't be able to know what happens to the molecules when they interact with other molecules, etc, etc, etc. Okay, so the problem is not with what science does. The problem is thinking that science is what science, no, sorry. The problem is thinking that what science says about an object, and I'm, I'm thinking about this specific science here, chemistry in our case, is everything we have to know about this object. Okay? That, that's the problem. Okay. Now, literature doesn't need to understand stuff. I mean, not in that sense. Not in the sense of decomposing it in small pieces and analyzing and understanding everything. Therefore, literature doesn't need to simplify the phenomenon. 
there is a person in front of me, this person had an incredible life, and in the end there was an incredible end, and I can't understand that end, I don't need to explain. I just need to pay a lot of attention to represent it in all the levels of complexity. So, for example, one of the greatest things we read in literature is that many, many characters, they are contradictory, right? And when they're well represented, we read them. Guys, I'm not talking about the contradiction of the author, the guy writing. This is a defect. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a character that you see and you know the guy is contradictory, but the guy is real, you know? Uh, the author doesn't need to choose if he's good or bad, for example. He doesn't, all right? Now, why would that kind of ability, recognizing the complexity of life, be important for anybody? Because in our lives, general lives, we live in a world of complexity. We live in a world where we don't have the answers. Of course, sometimes we stop life, we study science, right? And we have certain answers there, but when we go back to reality, we know that. We know that the theory, we know the theory is working, but there are many other factors, right? That are interfering in that conception we have of reality. Uh, so, we can either close our eyes to that complexity and say water is just the chemical components of it, we can just uh, stop caring, I don't want to understand the world, there's nothing to be understood here. Or we may try to look at the world and understand, that not in the meaning of explaining, but understanding the meaning of uh, knowing what is going on. Looking at things with attention, and that's what science does. And uh, if we do that with our friends, with our family, in discussions, you know, uh, for example, in political discussions, right? If we see that things are much more complicated than this classification and that classification, then we're going to be better people.